My name's Francesca or Fran and I'm a first year medic at the University of Oxford and in today's video I'm going to be giving you my top tips plus my experiences of how I got into the University of Oxford for medicine so stay tuned. Make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell. Click the bell. Just, just click the button. Click the, the button. <laughs> Before we progress with the video, I'd kind of like to give you guys some context and background as to the kind of school that I was applying to Oxbridge from. So through year seven to year 13, I went to the same school and it was state school and it didn't have the best track record. I remember a good two years before I applied, Ofsted came to the school and we were labeled like inadequate. Like our teaching wasn't the greatest. Um, and in terms of Oxbridge admission rates, there were like a few every so years who got in the year prior to mine two people applied to Oxbridge both to Oxford and both got rejected the year before there was no one so in terms of me having contacts in my school for me to go to for advice and help with my application there wasn't really anybody so it meant that I had to resort to the internet it meant that I had to resort to access schemes such as summer schools and conferences to get the information that I needed on how to make a competitive application and I'm hoping this video will form part of the helpful resource that you guys have if you're interested in applying to Oxbridge or medicine in general. So the first step in your application is to pick a course, of course. D do you see what I did there? Pick a course. For those of you who've been following me over the past two years, you will know that medicine wasn't my first choice. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I've always wanted to do science, particularly chemistry, because I enjoyed it for GCSE and A-level, so that's what I originally wanted to do for university. Um, and it wasn't until I went to a summer school, namely Unique Summer School for Chemistry, that I realised that maybe, maybe, um, Maybe chemistry was not for me. If you guys want a separate video on why I picked medicine, I will do it. Just make sure you put it in the comment section below. So yes, know what course you want to do. My top tip is to research. Research is key. The internet is so rich and if you look hard enough, you'll find everything you need from YouTube to websites specializing in your subjects articles, you will find everything you need. So as cliche as it sounds, make sure you pick a course that you enjoy because you're gonna be doing it for the next three, four, possibly six years if you're picking medicine. You're going to be investing £10,000 to that course every single year and the best way to find out the course that you want to do is research, attend, open days, talk to students studying the course that you want to do, um, YouTube, the internet just in general. So for those of you wanting to apply to Oxbridge, you'll probably know that Oxford is separated into individual colleges. Each college in itself is like a mini campus and your college is where you live, it's where you have your tutorials, it's where you spend most of your time in first year and then essentially it becomes kind of your mini home within this massive university. The reason why I applied to Brazenose is because I spent unique there. I really enjoyed the people that I met there, I enjoyed the place that I stayed in, I enjoyed the general vibe, if I can go off the vibe. Um, and I realized that it was pretty much very central compared to other colleges so I enjoyed that because you know I don't want to be you know walking 30 minutes 40 minutes a day just to get to my lectures because that's kind of a trek whilst I've met people at university who've put significantly more thought into the colleges that they apply to for various reasons and factors including college sizes other factors include accommodation some colleges guarantee en suites to their first year students whereas other colleges don't guarantee en suites and it's randomly allocated and you can end up with a really crappy room like myself some colleges offer kitchens to their first year students um, whereas other colleges you'd be surprised to hear don't offer kitchens to their first year students what including brazenose other factors include the facilities um, that your college has there are so many factors even including diversity some colleges such as Mansfield have outstanding diversity in terms of ethnicity in terms of percentage of state school educated kids so yeah these are all factors to consider and the advice I can give in terms of choosing a college is to do your research number two attend open days the university as a whole will have an open day but individual colleges will host 
open days on different dates. So make sure that you research the times, make sure you research whether you need to sign up for them, make sure that when you go there you take full advantage of the opportunities in terms of speaking to current students there, ambassadors, um, outreach officers, so that you can get all the information that you, you need essentially. One thing that I should say is that if you can't, you genuinely cannot decide what college you want to go to, you can make an open application. Now that you've decided that you want to do medicine or whatever the course is, you've decided what college you want to go to, the next step is your personal statement. And guys, this word will be echoed time and time and time again from year 12 to the deadline. Your personal statement is a 4,000 word document essentially designed for you to sell yourself not literally, to the admissions tutors, to your university, and convince them that you're the right candidate to admit to their course. So what is genuinely required across an Oxbridge personal statement, compared to non-Oxbridge universities, they'll expect you more to focus on the academics at hand, um, extra research that you've, you've done, books that you've read, academic events that you've attended, academic concepts that you've enjoyed, and they'll expect you to convey that passion for education and academics throughout your personal statement. Um, when you look at subject specific requirements for personal statements across Oxford, they will differ. For example, medicine, which is a vocational subject, will require more work experience in your personal statement and more reflective skills echoed through that. So in terms of my work experience, I actually did work experience quite late. So I started my work experience in July and my last placement was all the way in September which was a few weeks before the deadline the UCAS deadline so as you can imagine every time that I was redrafting my personal statement I was adding some of the new experiences that um, I'd experienced or the new skills that I picked up from these work experience placements that I was constantly doing in terms of how much work experience there isn't a definitive answer I've met people who've wrote about 12 work experience that's probably a lie I've met people who've wrote about four experiences whereas in my personal statement I only wrote about two of my work experience placements out of the total five that I actually had and the reason being is that there's more emphasis put on the reflection of your personal experience than the actual content of it. It's that ability to reflect on your experiences, identify the skills that the doctors exhibited during your experience and see how you can implement that into your own future practice and is definitely a good direction to head in in terms of writing your personal statement. So I'm going to use the example from my own personal statement and one of the work experience placements that I had was in a cardiology ward. During this placement I had the privilege of seeing so many medical procedures, so many interesting cases um, from seeing a cardio version which is basically where you get the electric paddles and you put it on the person's chest and you electrocute them so that their heart rhythm can go back to normal. I had the privilege of seeing an angiogram which is basically where you insert some dye into a person's veins to, to see them. Like all this interesting stuff but I didn't actually put all of this in my personal statement. One because I didn't have enough space you only have 4,000 characters which goes pretty quickly but two because out of all the experience I had during this placement there were more important things that I could reflect upon and um, develop in my personal statement so I'll read you one of the sections I observed cardiologists work in stressful ethical situations such as with a heroin addict suffering from endocarditis determined to leave the ward the risk of relapse and endangering her life fueled the complexity of the dilemma and demanded resilience abstract thinking and effective communication from the multidisciplinary team this was inspiring and enriched my grasp that even if decisions go against your beliefs and patients beneficence autonomy so the patient's wishes should be respected such respect is vital for successful practice and i try to emulate that in my part-time job when handling conflicts and customer demands under pressure guys i can talk for ages about the personal statement but essentially the main points i wanted to draw from this is that one i only spoke about one specific case but i managed to write a whole paragraph of reflection based on this i managed to identify the key skills that the doctors were showing and i managed to talk about how i'm trying to implement and emulate that in my everyday life as part of my part-time job and surprisingly enough i was talking about mcdonald's i managed to transform something so stigmatized such as working in mcdonald's to something that i can use in my personal statement for medicine power of words power of words so now that you've came up with your first attempt of the personal statement you now have to draft it and i drafted mine 
10 times. Use the resources you have. Go to your subject specific teachers to check on the subject content. Go to your English teachers to check the grammar, the punctuation, all of that. Make sure that it's correct. If you know of anyone who's done your course, go to them. But one thing I can say is take everyone's advice with a pinch of salt. What I found during my experience is that people were saying different things. Some people were saying parts of my statements were amazing, whereas other people were saying I should remove it, it's unnecessary. Um, and that can become quite conflicting. So make sure you know what you want to convey for your personal statement. Um, and don't be easily swayed by what people say because especially because you're applying to Oxford, your personal statement is going to be used in interviews and you'll essentially need to defend. Now the next thing in your Oxbridge application process is the admissions tests. For medicine it is the BMAT which stands for the biomedical admissions tests. For law it's the ALNAT, the law national altitude. I don't know the specifics but make sure you research what admissions tests you need to do for your course. Make sure you research the dates that you have to apply by, how much you have to pay, whether you can get funding for them, whether your school can fund for your admissions test. All I'm going to say in this video is to prepare for your admissions tests, do past paper questions. Do past paper questions. They're available on the Cambridge admissions test website. I'll put a link to that in the description bar below. Like GCSEs and A-levels, the mark schemes and um, the examiner's reports are also critical because you need to know how your exams are going to be marked, especially if they're like written pieces. So BMAT section three is like an essay kind of thing. See how it's going to be marked and capitalise off that. Watch YouTube videos if you struggle with specific sections or concepts for your test. And at the end of the day, I think it's important to remember that these admissions tests are hard they're designed to be hard. The reason being is that you have thousands of very talented and very worthy students applying to Oxford, Cambridge every single year. So the way that the university can further differentiate between students is to throw at them this really difficult test to aid them in shortlisting candidates from this pool of really talented candidates. So it's just important to consider that if you don't do well in these tests, that's okay. They're not designed for you to do well. I read somewhere that if you like get 50% in these tests, the BMAT, the TSA, whatever it is, that's okay. Like um, another thing I can say is you don't need the best admissions test score to get into Oxford. I can testify to that. Section one, I got 5.2. Section two, I got five. My essay was 3.5A, which is basically very average, a little bit above average. And I still managed to get in. I think the reason was that other parts of my application were a lot stronger. So I was fortunate enough to have good grades. I'm not saying that you need good grades, but I'm saying that in my situation, the good grades could have been the reason why I was shortlisted. And maybe my interview, which I think went okay-ish, could have been the reason why I was further selected. So yeah, when selecting candidates, when giving out offers, the university takes a holistic view they consider every single element of your application some parts more than others and to find out the proportions the weights that they put to different parts of your application again research So another part of your application will be your predicted grades and these will be put by your teachers. I know in the current climate with um, COVID-19, it's hard to say what your predicted grades will be. But one thing I can say is stay in communication with your teachers, especially if we're at home. Make sure you're emailing them leading up to the 15th of October. Make sure that you're maintaining this transparency and balance between re be your grades being realistic, but also your teachers being considerate that you are applying to Oxbridge and you will need competitive grades. I should have mentioned this earlier um, but I think it's linked to predicted grades and these are your GCSE grades. You don't need all A stars to get into Oxford and I will say it louder for the people in the back. Say it louder for the people in the back you heard? You don't need all A stars. I know people who have got 13 A stars for their GCSEs and didn't even receive an offer. And as I said before, I know of a person who didn't get a single A star in his GCSEs and received an offer. So it's very variable, like don't let that be your limit. Even if you think it's a risk, a massive risk, you have five places for UCAS. Like you might as well use one of them for Oxbridge if that's where you want to go. Although GCSE grades are heavily looked upon as an indication of how you might perform in your A levels, it's not a determinant of how you'll perform in your A levels and admissions officers acknowledge this. 
Now, another part of your application is written work, and this is more relevant to humanity subjects and less so for scientific subjects. You can send off written work that you've done in the past to kind of showcase your writing ability and fluency and kind of give them something else to look at when they're selecting candidates for interview and for offers. Um, yeah, for medicine, there isn't any written work. Now, the next part of your application, and this is the hallmark, the hallmark, interviews. Interviews, bro, interviews. Interviews at Oxford are quite the experience. So essentially, you go to Oxford to your allocated college or the college you've selected, um, and you spend minimum of two days there. Sometimes it can be longer than two days, and this is because of the pooling process, which I'll talk about in a second. The first day, I had two interviews, and these were at Brazenose, and the second day, I had two interviews at a different college, new college. So in Oxford for medicine, you will have interviews in a minimum of two colleges. You'll have two at either, and if you know other colleges want to see you as an applicant or if you didn't really perform as well as other candidates in your college but your admissions tutors still think you're a worthy candidate they can suggest that you're interviewed in other colleges you will have additional interviews at other colleges and this is part of the pooling process this doesn't mean you're less likely to get an offer or more likely to get an offer this is just the way that Oxford ensure that by applying to your specific college you don't have an increased or decreased chance of getting in so it kind of levels the playing field I went in thinking it was like a business interview like you're going for a job so I went in thinking you know you had to be dressed all properly I needed my smart trousers smart shoes my shirt my blazer I needed to go in with being really articulate and have all this advanced vocabulary but upon my first interview all these pre-existing kind of expectations were shut down I just remember it being really chilled the first couple of seconds are to make you feel comfortable and settle you in they ask you how you are they ask you how your journey down to Oxford has been often they start the interview asking you to talk about something you're passionate about so in one of my interviews I was asked to just speak about anything scientific that I wanted and although that seems like a good question it was quite intimidating at the time because I was like I was overthinking it I was like wait, wait wait what does he mean does he want me to go for something that's really really deep and very relevant right now like dementia or does he want me to speak about something that's like strictly related to my A-level course like what does he want me to speak about um but in the end I'm, I ended up talking about depression and the kind of biological element of that so the involvement of neurotransmitters because that's something that was really interesting to me at the time and something I've been studying in AS psychology and I was like hmm this is gonna like make me shine like he won't be expecting psychology you know what I'm saying um, your interview isn't a oh I'm gonna see how much this candidate knows check it's to see how much your tutors can stretch you you go into your interview with this set of knowledge and your interviewer's job is to see how much further you can take that knowledge how many ideas you can develop from this set of knowledge that you started off with so instead of seeing where you start off at they're seeing how far the distance that you can go in the 20 minutes of your interview so in that sense your interview is more of an academic conversation between your interviewer and Boy, you practice practice being in an interview practice having it, like intellectual academic conversations about topics that you're passionate about practice that a lot of schools will have the privilege of offering mock interviews and I understand that not everyone will have that um, but in my school I actually spoke to my science teacher my chemistry teacher and I remember her offering to give me a mock interview with the head of sixth form if you still can't access mock interviews i recommend looking at the internet looking at what an oxford cambridge interview is like there are people on the internet who've collaborated with their tutors to film a mock interview for you to see and of course leading up to your interview look at your personal statement scrape through it with a comb because you'll be asked questions based on your personal statement and sometimes you'll be expected to defend the points that you've made in your personal statement all in all to kind of summarize the point on interviews just be yourself relax genuinely they're not there to kill you they're not there to eat you they want to see your potential and that's the key word your potential also practice practice makes perfect practice talking to yourself in front of your mirror to improve your communication skills if possible set up mock interviews at school set up conversations with your friends mock interview your friends and ask them to interview you any opportunity that you have to talk about subject related questions and topics use them leading up to your your interview so we have finally reached the end of this video i hope this has been useful and helpful to anyone interested in applying to medicine 
Oxford, Cambridge, university in general. These are tips that I've picked up during my own experience of applying to Oxford and getting in. If you have any questions, big or small, make sure you put them in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer all of them. And my social media handles are in the description. So if you wanna privately message me on Instagram or something, you can find the information out there. Wishing you guys a beautiful rest to your day and I shall see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.